Welcome into this final edition of the Shauna Clear Football Update for this 2017 season alongside the interim head coach, Jamie Chadwell. Joe Cash in here with you, and we hope everyone had a blessed and bountiful Thanksgiving break as the Shauna Clears were also off over Thanksgiving. But, Coach, let's rewind a little bit. The first ever Sunbelt Conference win a couple of weeks ago at Idaho, a great trip for the team and a great win. It was. Uh, you know, really pleased with their team. It seems like forever ago, so we had that open week. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But it, it, it was nice. It was, you know, we were able to go out there in a, in a, in a place we never played. Obviously, a long way away. Had to, had to go out a day before, so a lot of maybe possible distractions. And I, th I thought overall we played a pretty uh, complete game. Didn't turn the, uh, didn't, didn't make any uh, ca catastrophic mistakes. Defense played well, and I thought our kicking game did a nice job. You mentioned going out early. Do you think it helped to get out there in that Pacific time zone, three time zones away to kind of get the kids acclimated for that environment? Well, you know, I don't think it sure didn't hurt. You know, I mean, any time, um, you know, the choice was get there at 6 o'clock on a Friday night for a, a 2 o'clock game or get there at 6 o'clock Thursday. We had to do the Thursday. And, and I, I think it did work out, allowed them to get some rest, uh, allowed them to – Get adjusted as much as possible to the uh, to the time change. Thankful we played in the dome; it was pretty cold out there, uh, but uh, I thought they handled it well. When the game started, Idaho took the first possession and they drove the field 75 yards for a score. They were playing with a backup quarterback, the coach's son, their number one guy, Matt Linehan, out for the game. Had a great career for them. Uh, unfortunate break for them, but we were able to contain them after that first drive defensively. Yeah, they, they did. I think, you know, we were trying to fill them out. Well, they, we, we knew they were going to play that quarterback, what they were going to do, how they were going to use him. Uh, and it took us a little while to get adjusted. And so after that, I think they maybe had, maybe had one more drive where mm -hmm. they got down into scoring, and that was right out of the second half. Uh, and so I thought our defense did a nice job of, of forcing him to do things he just wasn't comfortable doing. And uh, we didn't allow any big plays. We, we shut down their run game. Uh, and that allowed us to, uh, you know, offensively try to control the ball and hopefully put up enough points, and fortunately we did. Fortunately we did as Coastal won at 13-7. to But going back to the first half of that game after Idaho scored in the second quarter, we were able to put something together and go down, and Alex James had a, a big run. I, I really like the future for this youngster. Yeah, Alex, I think, is uh, he's had a really nice uh, start to his career. Uh, every week you can see him getting better and better and just more confident in what we're doing. He, uh, that run he made, he made a guy miss in the box, and then he showed some speed there in the secondary. I, I think uh, his future is very bright. Uh, and that was, a, that was a big drive for us because we'd had some, uh, I think, some chances to make some plays and for whatever reason didn't do it there early. I think we were trying to adjust uh, offensively to some uh, – to uh, there was a little noisy there, in the, you know, and it got, mm -hmm. they got a little loud and on the senior day. And uh, our young guys up front got a little, uh, I would say intimidated, got a little nervous, and it took us a little while to settle down but I thought Kilton did a nice job of settling us down and getting us a good drive there. And then right before the end of the first half, I thought a big momentum swing for us as Evan Rabin knocked home a 52-yarder, gave us a 10-7 lead, and I really thought that gave us a nice jolt. It did. You know, we, we had a nice drive there. I think there was like five minutes left or for something, and we, we went about 50 yards or something to get because we were backed up. And for us to go up 10-7, especially after the start, it wasn't a pretty start for us. Uh, there in the first quarter on offense. And for us to take the lead 10-7, I think it gave us offensively confidence, but also uh, the defense feeling like, all right, we've got a lead now, and we can really pin our ears back and, and go after the guys. And that's what happened in the second half. Anthony Chesley blocks a field goal for them, and then Evan to uh, knocks home another field goal for us, made it 13-7. to And then, you know, kind of there at the end of the game, just hoping we hold on there, we get the ball back. Uh, they get one last shot, but you put the defense out there on the field and said, guys, we're going to win this thing with defense there at the end. Yeah, that was the, you know, we, I think the drive before we had a field goal opportunity yep. to put it away with about five minutes left. I thought we had a nice drive, couldn't finish it, and, we, and it just, you know, right off the upright. And then, so our defense goes out there and gets a great stop on fourth down. We had about three minutes to go, and we ran it down, I think, about 40-something seconds. Couldn't get the first down. And uh, my thought process was, um, the only way I thought they could score on us if they blocked the kick and ran it back. That was I thought that's the only way they're going to score on our defense. They were playing so well, and uh, you know we did that. I, I think I got ripped by everybody, including the coaches. I'm sure all the fans too. Uh, <laughs> but you got to make those decisions. And, yeah, and it worked I mean, out for us. You know our, our defense got a got a stop. Obviously, and they had no chance to even get close, uh, and uh, so it was a big win for us. But I, I, w I was going to put in our defense saying if they're going to beat us, we're going to let that quarterback that's the backup beat us. Not not a, a bad snap or a, a low kick or a missed block. I, I'd rather put it on there where we, we felt like our defense play well all game. You go back to the Texas State game and that kind of stuff can happen. You know, they had a bad snap that we scooped up and went and scored. So that kind of stuff can happen. But uh, You never know. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> Football's a funny game yeah, like that. If, if they, uh, you know, we could have kicked it and went up 16-7 and sure. everybody would have been great, you know, and, and nothing happened. But uh, you try to – you make your decisions, you know, not during the game, but obviously you have a plan going into it of things that, hey, if, if situations arise. 
and that's one that you, you know you that doesn't come up often, but you think about it, and we, I felt like that. Hey, that's the best decision for us, and fortunately, our defense uh, made it look good. And they sure did. At the end of the day, it all added up to a 13 to seven coastal win. And you told the team in the locker room after I saw the video, the first of many to come. That's right. You know, I mean, we've we've knocked on the doors, you know, in our and and this year we've had four games in our conference where we've been a touchdown or less. You know, and, and and those go your way. You're sitting here at five and whatever, and you know you're right. you're battling for maybe second place. You just don't know. But for whatever reason, we weren't ready to win those. But I do believe uh, that uh, getting that win, sort of getting that monkey off our back, so to speak, is is going to allow us to play more one with more confidence, but freely knowing, hey, that first one's out of the way, and there will be more to come. Hopefully, this coming week. Um, but I do believe we're heading in the right direction where uh, this program will be at the top of the league in no time. We'll take a break and come back and tell you who the players of the game were. We'll do that after this. <laughs> Coastal wins it over Idaho 13-7, and the players of the game, first offensively coach, the aforementioned Alex James, 81 rushing yards for the redshirt freshman out of Florence and that 42-yard touchdown. I, I really like him. I like the way he runs. I think he runs hard. I think he's going to be a great one by the time he gets out of here. I agree. He had he had the big run. What you don't see about Alex, we ask him to do a lot in the passing game, trying to get out. Uh, we also, you know, he does a lot in our, in our run game. I think he only had like 10 carries, so we've got to get him the ball more in some certain situations. But uh, as he learns uh, more and more how to play this game at this level, he's going to have a good career for us. Amir Howard was the player of the game on defense, eight tackles. Yeah, I thought that's probably Amir's best game that he played. He was really consistent. Uh, they put him in some situations with the way they formationed them where he had to make some one-on-one -on -one plays, and he did. Nobody got behind him. He made some big tackles on, uh, on the running back as well up in the hole, and they had some guys break free, and a big game for him. And then on special teams, Karan Johnson, who's had a really productive year, both defensively and on special teams. He did. You know, his his uh, his contribution to our team on special teams is, uh, you know, is something that the coaches, uh, I think we probably might take for granted some. He's on every special team. He's out there every time. And he's playing a lot of defense as well. And so, uh, you know, when you, when you mention guys that are try to be selfless, you want guys that throw their body around and do anything for the team to try to get a victory. And, and Karan's done that for us. And uh, he probably has a chance to be an all con or uh, you know, a, a shot or a player of the week every week because of his right. role on special teams. And, and he does something every week to help us be successful. And Marcus Williamson, I thought, had a pretty good game on defense. He had a couple of big stops, tackles for loss there late in the game to kind of seal it for the Shauna Clears. Yeah, especially the last two drives. He got he got, uh, got a big tackle. You know, I, I think they were holding him there earlier a little bit. A couple times. <laughs> I think they were, you know, too. We can't get any calls, obviously. Uh, you know, every time I feel like we're going to have one, we don't get it. And the, what's the bad thing? What is it? The referee was my college teammate. I, I was like, man, you got to do something for me. And so, but. Uh, now that's fascinating. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was my college teammate, and uh, and he's good. Jeremy Parker's name does a great job. Does a great job. He's a referee, and and uh, does a, does an unbelievable job. Worked his way up, but the um, uh, Marcus did a nice job. So we'll take one final break, and when we come back, we will preview Saturday's opponent for Senior Day, the final game of the 2017 season, as the Georgia Southern Eagles invade Conway. We'll do it after this break. <laughs> The Shana Clears will wrap up 2017 with the Georgia Southern Eagles coming to town this Saturday. Fourth ever meeting between these two, but first in the Sun Belt Conference and a couple of two and nine teams coming at it and both coming in, I think, Coach, with a little bit of momentum. Georgia Southern has kind of found their way here in the last couple of weeks. They demolished South Alabama and then, of course, defeated Louisiana last week. And, of course, this football team, Shana Clears coming off the win over Idaho. Give us a quick snapshot of the Eagles. <clears throat> well, they are playing a lot better. They, uh, you know, they fired their coach and they named him interim and, and he's been politicking for the job. And he got it here the last couple of weeks. Uh, they played really well. They gave it to him, I think, yesterday maybe. So that's what that team won. You could tell they were really playing for him. And I think he's a graduate. So they've got a lot of momentum. Uh, they've got a lot of support. So they're, 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 they're on a high right now. And, uh, and so we need to make sure that uh, our purpose for playing is just as high or more than theirs. And I think that's what it's going to come down to is are we going to show up and build off the momentum that we had? Obviously, we had the op open week. And so you lose some of that because, you, you know, you send some guys. We needed that open week, but you'll lose some of that. So we got to make sure that uh, we're as invested and as excited about playing on Saturday as they are. And if I think we will, uh, we should have a good game. They run the true triple option out of the gun most mm -hmm. of the time, if not all the time. Compare and contrast the way that Coastal runs its offense, your offense, as to what they do. They're more, uh, <clears throat> they're more of a zone based off of it, more of a true zone read. But they now they're going to run it. If, if they've got a hundred snaps, they're going to probably run it ninety. Right. You know, they're going to try to run it, run it, run it. 
Uh, they've got a quarterback that can really go if he gets outside and, and uh, he can really run here from the state of South Carolina. He can really go. Yeah. And so uh, I think that's the big difference. They're not going to try to throw it if they do. It's, they're throwing it deep, you know, and trying to take a shot and trying to catch a play action where we're a little bit more balanced in some of the things we do. I think we do a little bit more stuff to it where they're going to try to do one or two things and say, hey, we just got better athletes than you. Uh, and uh, the last two weeks, they've had better athletes than everybody else. First few weeks, not as much, but uh, they're, they're, they're playing really well, and we have to contain the quarterback. Uh, and if we can contain him, then, you know, you like your chances. What do you think the Shauna Clares can do against the Georgia Southern defense? Well, you know, they, they do a nice job of, of uh, bringing a lot of blitzers. You know, they try to disguise it. And so I do think there's opportunities for big plays if we can take care and, you know, protect the quarterback and give us a chance to get the ball out uh, in space. When they've given up points, uh, people have been able to protect and get them in some man-to-man, -man, one one-on-one shots and had to do those things. So we're going to have some chances there. We have to make them. Uh, if we give them, if we go three and out and, 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 and allow them to get excited and get that offense back out there, and you know how that goes when sure. you're playing. A, and it just bleeds, 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 and it can be a long day. So we've got to do a good job of scoring points. Sixteen seniors will also be honored. They will be playing their final games as Shauna clears this coming Saturday. And I won't name them all off the top of my head right here, guys like Oshamar Abercrombie, who's had a great career, along with Chris Jones and you know Shane Johnson, Karan Johnson, Dwayne Price, those kind of guys. They will be wrapping up out here on Saturday. They will. They've obviously meant a lot to this this program. You know. Taking the FCS to the number one team in the country and yep. the playoffs, they've they've have huge, uh, they've been a huge part of that process, and they've been a big part of this foundation that we're building going to. Without those guys, we wouldn't be in FBS. So they're, they're they're a big part of what's going on. Without the success they had, you know, the disappointment for them is it's not the way they wanted to go out. Obviously, but what we've tried to share with them is. Uh, the foundation, the legacy you leave, the way you handle this season, and if you continue to fight and do the things uh, that a Shauna Clear football player should, uh, that's going to be way more important down the line than all those other things because you know when you come back and we're winning Sun Belts and bowl games that you had to help us go through that, that transition and you laid that foundation to do that. And, and those seniors mean a lot, and I hope everybody show up and, and show them the – uh, the gratitude that they deserve for the career they've had. No question about it. Game time will be 1 o'clock on Saturday. The Shot Clear Sports Network will go on the air at 11. And, Coach, I know it's been a, a tough season, but I'm excited for the future, very hopeful for the future of Shot Clear football at the FBS level and in the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, Got to win the last time out. Let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up with another win and take two into the offseason. We will do that, Joe. I appreciate uh, this is probably my last time doing this with you, but uh, I've enjoyed it tremendous, tremendously. And, you know, what everybody says about you in the back not true. So you do a great <laughs> job. So. Coach, I sure do appreciate it. It's been great working with you this year. Thank you. All right, for, for the interim head coach, Jamie Chadwell, my name is Joe Cash, and we appreciate you tuning us in this year on the Shauna Clear Football Update.